container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he is Ubi, from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Moindi. Container, container, used to be wild pines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there, how can I help you, mister? The look in his deep blue eyes is as sincere as you've ever seen. Kind of makes you feel like an arsehole for no apparent reason. I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know, and folks gotta eat. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Oh yes, born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new new world. I was about ten then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No sir, those are just nasty rumours. Thank you for clarifying that sir. Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes I am, yes I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Sure mister, about what? Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation. For a week or so. Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boy stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling him to take some time off. Don't go all bad cop on this simple, friendly fellow. I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. That's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hardies. Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving and the words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who, no, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellick. But everyone calls me Leo. I'm like Mr. Everett's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town. And Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everett is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> Who is this Miss Beaufort? A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douai Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. Them are real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down beside the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes I am, yes I am. Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. Oh, Lizzie. She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood. Knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. For a fraction of a second, this sadness in his eyes. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. Doctor Lemaitre said so, and she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years she has.
Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. The white rectangle on your clothes might not mean an awful lot in Martinez, but the recognition from an authority figure made Leo's day. Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Tell you. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. Guys like Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made marginalized what it is today. Mr. Everard and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Oh, Mr. Everard is where he always is. In his office, of course. Bye-bye now. <laughs>